some years ago, I was at a youth retreat where they had now, a one of the great questions that people God the Creator should be obvious by the gentleman. If you were looking down or Jesus from high lines of God the Creator. When I was in India, this little lady, across the street from her, there was this, this Hindu who hated Christians, and every day he'd come across the street and he'd dump his garbage over the, over the wall into her courtyard, and then he'd dump his dirty water on top of the garbage, and he'd go back home. So after a couple of days, she met him at the gate, and she opened the gate, she's just a little woman, she met him at the gate, and she said to him, it must be very difficult for you to throw the garbage over the wall every day. So I'll try and meet you here at the gate and let you in. So I'll try and meet you here at the gate and let you in. And if you want to dump it here, that's fine. Or if you want to put it in our bed or in our kitchen, that's fine. It doesn't bother, it doesn't bother us. Uh, we're Christians, you know, and we love our neighbors. And we're just so glad that you come to visit. <laughs> it's not playing fair, is it? No. Within a month, this hard-bitten Hindu that hated Christians was over with turban in hand asking if he could use the courtyard for his son's wedding reception. Love wins. Well, the Bible says that winning your brother is more difficult than taking a city. Now, when you take a city, you don't just walk up to the front door, ring the doorbell. Right? Taking a city means that this, this is fortified against you. And that's what's happened, isn't it? You feel like you're outside and someone has built a fortress. They're not going to let you in. They've shut you out. And this is where love comes in. Love is the secret weapon we have. So what I have to do is make, do a little reconnoitering around the fortress to see if I can find a weak spot in the defense. And the idea is then to get in to that brother's heart, to get inside. Not to take advantage of them, not to hurt them, but to love them. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. If your enemy comes to you, feed him, to pray for those who despitefully use you. Say to them, um, you know, every day I pray for young people. I'd like to pray for your kids. Could you kind of keep me updated? I'm going to be praying for your children every, every day. Boy, it's hard to be an enemy of somebody like that, isn't it? Uh, somebody says something nasty about me, I say, well, I know how to get even. I'll say something nice about them. That's what I'll do. And that's the secret weapon, isn't it? <laughs> if people speak ill of me, well, I pray for them. I speak well of them. I Don't be overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Plan a strategy to go after their hearts. Find a way in. Love, instead of making me feel like a victim, makes me the victor. Right? It puts the momentum back in my hands. Because what happens when somebody hurts me, I feel like I'm wounded and there's nothing I can do about it. Here's how you get the momentum back. Here's how you have a strategy now. It's not easy. It will need supernatural grace to do it. But I think it's the secret. It's the strategy the Lord Jesus used to win your rebel heart. And that's the secret. We were at, at enmity with God. And how did he win me? Not by arm wrestling me. He won me by getting down and loving me. Jesus knew what he was talking about. When he hung on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. When Judas came for the last dinner, Je Jesus gave him the energy, gave him the food that he used to go and betray Jesus. And Jesus knew what he was doing. 
So the Lord's not asking us to do something that he's never done himself. This is what Jesus did when the Pharisees came. They were going to fight with Jesus. They're standing at the back of the crowd. He said, let me tell you a little story. And he told them a story about 99 good little sheep that stayed home. And they thought to themselves, that's us, right? The scoundrels at the front of the crowd, they're the bad sheep. And so they felt they relaxed. And he told a second story about nine good little coins and one lost coin. And after three stories about this bad prodigal that went to the far country, they're thinking to themselves, this preacher's not so bad after all. This is good. We like this. Give it to them. And then at the very end of the story, he says, oh, by the way, could I tell you the story of the other brother? And now their defenses are down. And he tells them a story about the other brother. And what's the point? He says, don't you realize, gentlemen, that you're the most welcome men in the countryside and I have been sent as the personal representative of my father to plead with you to come into the father's house. Now that is winsome, isn't it? That's wonderful. And we'd have some really wonderful stories to tell, wouldn't we? If only we would learn the secret of taking a city. It's more tough to win your brother than it is to take a city. But the policy is the same. The secret is the same. Find the spot where you can get inside, not to hurt them, but to love them. Because love never fails. Love will win the day when nothing else will do it.